My lunch today consists of Doritos. That was the most ungraceful Dorito eat in my life. It's all about realism here. All about authentic Dorito eating. It's not about sexy Dorito eating. Am I right? Good things I put on the internet. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny. I'm Danny, and this channel is all about solving home decor dilemmas in your space. And I'm doing it with, you guessed it, a DIY. Today's home decor dilemma is with my friend, Jenny Lin. She is the owner and creator of Fusion Mineral Paints. And if you follow me on Instagram, then you know how much I truly love her paint line. Like how beautiful is this? Color. I keep gushing over it, I just can't get enough. So when she came to me and asked me to help her with her office space, I had to say yes. This is going to be a three part series. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss out on any of them. And if you are returning, then welcome back and thank you for the ongoing support. So first things first, let's go check out that office space. Roll the tape. Hello? This is a really bad room. Guys, her space was so lovely. It was in a like old industrial building. So it had these beautiful windows. When you walk into the space, it had this beautiful barn sliding door. Ugh, this is my dreamland. This is what I want in my space one day. She had already created a dark blue accent wall on the back wall and then had a couple things that were gonna start to take shape, but nothing in there was really definitive in terms of what she wanted in the space. And I was so excited to be there at the beginning so I can make some DIYs to make the space look epic. So after we got talking, we landed on three projects that we were going to focus on. One was the main table that she wanted to do client meetings at. The second was a hanging beam where industrial lights will hang off of it. And then the third DIY was this awful radiator that she had in the space. And a lot of you probably have these in your home, but this one was old and brutal and rusting and it had cobwebs inside it and I think it used to be red and white but it was not happy. I mean Jenny Lynn and I talked about covering the radiator but once I got into the space and I kind of got that whole industrial vibe it didn't feel right to cover it. Instead I thought what if we give it a little bit of a makeover. Okay so I only totally think that we could use your paints to ombre those. I thought of the idea of doing a really cool ombre effect and cleaning up that radiator to give it new life. Those were the projects. I walked away happy, she walked away happy, and uh, I was ready to get started. The first project I was going to tackle was the radiator. This was definitely the project that was the lesser of the three, and I knew that I could tackle this quickly. I came up with a plan of how I was going to split up that ombre. It was going to transition from a very nice light pinky coral all the way way to the final color which was this beautiful coral color. Okay guys, I'm at Jenny Lynn's today. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Feel it? <laughs> today we're going to be mixing some paint so that we can set up the ombre for her radiator. And the best part about this project is that it is so simple. It's such a mini change but it's going to drastically elevate this room. Also, everybody, are these not the coolest glasses ever? Right? I gotta take this off. Who am I, Casey Neistat? All right, so what's our first step? All right, so the rule is remember, make more than you think you're gonna need. Yes. So Deal. Go. Anybody with me that like watching paint being mm. poured into a cup feels very therapeutic? Ah, oh, it feels so good. Yeah. So this is like a, a grayish white color, mm -hmm. and that's gonna give us a nice variation. Yep. We're basically starting with the base and then you start mixing in your secondary colors to change it. Before yep. we settle on anything, we're just going to make sure that we like the colors. So we're going to test it in strips on a white piece of cardboard, nothing fancy, but it's just to make sure that we like it. That's the, the most purest intense color. So there it is. That is going there. <laughs> Yay! We're so excited! Let's paint, let's paint, let's paint! Okay, but now 
now the less fun part. I gotta prep. So the big thing to note about this is that when you're in old buildings like Jenny Lynn's or you live in an old home, a lot of those radiators used to be painted with paint made with lead. When you start to brush it or remove that paint, it can actually be very harmful to you. So if you don't know what kind of paint was used on your radiator, I highly suggest you go and get the test. Um, <laughs> get the test, get tested. Um, I... Can I help you? Get the test to make sure that the paint isn't originally made. So if you have an old radiator in your home and you're not sure what kind of paint uh, it was tested with, then I highly suggest a hug. <laughs> We're going to get this video made. Kenobi, lie down, sit. I love you, but I don't love you right now. You can't crawl on me to see a window. Do you know how big you are? One second. If your kit does test positive, there are lots of precautions that you can take, and I've also listed a bunch of links in the description box below, but I'm taking a more conservative approach, and I'm just going to be covering all of that old paint with a white primer. So the first step was I had to clean this baby off, and boy, was it dirty. <laughs> I was scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and the dirt was just falling. It got to a point where I was just like squeezing water over top of it just so that it could get into the nooks and crannies. Oh, what a nightmare. I think it got to a point where I put paper towel around a paint stick just so that I could get in there. And on top of that, there was an old rubber glove that was like, fermented and hardened in behind there. What you see here is the remnants of an old rubber glove. Is it prehistoric? We do not know, but it was used clean at one time. Gross. So take a look at your radiator next time you're walking by it and check out its cleanliness. <laughs> so once I got it all cleaned off, it was finally time to paint. What I had sourced was a multi-purpose white latex primer paint. It's an interior and exterior paint, but it also works on multiple surfaces. Of course, I did run into a little bit of a snag. Essentially what was happening was the rust was starting to come through. That latex paint was not holding in all the residual rust that was on the piece. What that meant was that I needed to move over to an oil-based primer. So essentially when it comes to applying paint on top of metals, oil paint is a really good option for you. The downsides to oil paints is they take longer to dry and they're super smelly. So make sure that you have windows that you can open up. Luckily I was able to find one in an aerosol can and I totally recommend doing this if you're going to make over your radiator. It was so much easier to get into all the little nooks and crannies and in between all the spindles. It gave it such a great coverage and it looked great by the end. Oh my god, it looked so good. She could have kept it white and it would have been just a drastic transformation right there. I'm gonna let this room air out and then uh, I will return next Sunday and I will start to paint the ombre. Guys, it's the last day to the radiator makeover. I'm so excited to start adding that ombre color onto the radiator. Let's just remind ourselves of what it used to look like. Ah! Yeah, I'm gonna add a pop of color today and it's gonna look amazing. As you can see, we have our full ombre happening and then I've mapped out how I wanted to do the ombre based on numbers and color system that goes across. So starting with the lightest color, we were able to get going on our ombre. Who was excited? This is where the real life comes into the DIY. So the first color I was attacking, I was doing the six rungs plus the outside. The beautiful thing about using those fusion mineral paints is that you need so little of it and you get so much coverage. I hardly even dented that cup. Now I didn't bother to paint inside the radiator because no one was gonna see that. It was fine to be left white, but I did paint the two looking rungs on the top and the bottom and then the insides of the front radiator rungs. 
Once I put on the third color, I moved on to the fourth, but then I started to get a little cautious because that fourth color didn't look as drastic of a change. And I was kind of worried that it was going to look exactly the same as the third color. And then I got a little worried that my five and six were looking really similar too. So what I did was I took the darkest color and I went and painted my number six. First. I wanted to just see what it looked like on the radiator because then I could justify where I needed to bring my five tone into. So what I ended up doing to create my fifth color was I took 50% of my color number four and 50% of my color number six and essentially just mixed them up together. Hopefully this half and half will work itself out. This was able to create the perfect transition color that was between these two. And essentially this is how you would do it if you wanted to create an ombre for anything. Once all the colors were on that radiator, I was so blown away by how beautiful it looked. What a lovely color pop in this space. It wasn't overpowering, but it had such a nice soft tone to it. And the colors just turned out so beautifully. It transitioned so nicely from like that light coral pink all the way to that kind of orangey coral color. It looked so good and I was so happy with the final result. In terms of DIY, difficulty I would give this a one out of five stars guys this was a really easy DIY anybody can do this if you have a rental or if you own a home all you need to know is the proper how-to and just give it a little TLC so there you have it guys the DIY radiator makeover I hope you enjoyed this project I enjoyed doing it let me know what you thought in the comment section below you should check out Jenny Lynn's fusion mineral paint site look at all the colors and let me know what color you would have gone with because there are so many beautiful choices. Make sure you subscribe because there are two more to this three-part project um, coming your way and you don't want to miss out. I'll see you next time.